I folks, I felt pressed to, to speak about these things because it's getting hard to think. It's getting hard for all of us to think clearly because of what's going on and because of what's, uh, everybody's trying to be heard. Everybody's trying to be heard, but there's too many things to hear. And we are not God, so it is impossible for us to hear and process it, it all. And so it's hard for us to do our daily work. And so I hope that we can talk about a way, uh, a technique that you can use to kind of clear your mind so that you can go forward in, in the small circle that God has given you to, to make the world better and to, to love and serve your neighbor. You've got to have a clear heart. You've got to have a clear mind to do that or you are being run in circles. Um, so there are, two, there are two quotes that have popped up over the weekend, and they've been around a long time, but we've heard them a lot on social media. Number one is uh, something about, until the outrage of those who are unaffected matches the outrage of those who are affected, there will be no justice. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is that a riot is the language of the unheard. And I believe Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, penned that one. I'm not going to necessarily dive into or contradict either of those quotes because they're so open to interpretation. Perhaps that's what makes them effective is that people can do with them different things. But I'm going to go into a couple of these things uh, regarding outrage and about being heard. Outrage is defined as uh, an overwhelming shock of indignation, right? And it has this idea of uh, the rage must go out. It must externalize itself in something that, that, uh, that shows what the anger inside is. Now, is outrage, is anger something that the Bible commends us to? No, it's not. God is the only one who has the right to be angry. In your anger, it says, do not sin. And it says, flee from wrath, refrain from anger. Now, it's kind of hard to flee from wrath and refrain from anger in the world that we live in, though. So how do, we, how do we refrain from anger? Where do we put it? If we don't put it out there, and if we can't keep it inside, where does it go? And this is where prayer becomes the answer. Prayer is the pouring out of one's heart of frustrations, fears, and sadnesses to God, for he hears, he hears. Those who are unheard are heard by God, if not by anybody else. And being heard by God is healing. It puts your mind at order. It puts your heart at rest, at least sufficiently, for you to do something good and something constructive. Do you see how even my body, even my manner of speech changes as I begin to talk about prayer, as I begin to talk about the joy that I've experienced and being heard by God? Does it mean that he changes the very thing I'm complaining about? No, it doesn't mean that, but it means I can stand up, get off my knees, and I can feel completely different. I can feel washed knowing that my concerns are his concerns because I have thrown them onto his shoulders. And he has well demonstrated how much he cares for me and how much he cares for the whole world in sending his son, Jesus Christ, to take up our burden, the burden of the human race with all its divisions, with all its pains and sicknesses. Yes, God hears our prayers. So when you pray, get on your knees. This will show God and will show yourself your posture, your your true and genuine posture before him, your great need. When you pray, ask God why. Ask God why this is happening. Why do you let the oppressors oppress? Why do you let lawless men destroy? Why do you let evil run wild? This is in the Bible. Why, Lord? Ask him why. Because this is on your heart. You want to know why. You might not ever know why, but ask. And then ask him, how long? How long will this go on? How long will this life be ruled by wickedness? How long until you come back and perfect all things by your glorious kingdom? How long, O Lord, must I look at iniquity and look at vanity? Ask God, how long will it go on? And say, we. You can talk about them why are they doing this? Why are they like this? Why have they caused this? But you must say, why are we like this? And say, we have sinned against you. The problem, the problem 
of mindfulness meditation is that it is non-judgmental. Prayer is judgmental. I judge myself in my prayers. When I come before God, I am guilty. I am evil. And I am in need of his help. This washes me clean. By faith, I understand that I get his help. I get his healing. I get his forgiveness. I am part of this problem. You are part of this problem. And if we can say so in front of God, it actually means something. We are wrong. And we need God to make it right. Ask God what to do in your prayers. Ask God to show you what you can do. It's the easiest thing in the world for him to show you what to do. He will show you what to do and then you can do it. And you'll know. You won't be, your mind won't be all jumbled up with clutter. Your mind will be like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm a dad or I'm a mom or I'm a teacher or I'm a sibling or um, I work at this job or I've got free time and my neighborhood is this. You'll figure out what to do. And trust that God has called you to do that and he will work good through it. And finally, stand up knowing that you are heard. I think I already said this. I jumped the gun. But that's good. It's the most exciting part. To know that you have been heard by God means even if someone else isn't hearing you, even if someone else isn't listening to you, God hears you. And God can process your complaint. God can process the needs of our world and our community. And he's doing it. And he will. Um, it's going to get worse, probably. That's because we have the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature living here. But God lives here too, and he's going to win. He is loving, compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Christ is risen from the dead. This world will rise from the dead as well, if we trust in him with all our heart. That's about all. Have a good day.